Beats, episode 135. <laughs> we got fire. We got fire. So, what a crazy week. So many things. First of all, though, there's two new queens in the house. <laughs> the first one is a mini Anita Baker. Mini. Now, that was sent to me um, from Sharon in Redyard, Michigan. She said she couldn't find a big one. So That's cool. okay, though, because in real life, Anita is my height. That's <laughs> she is this size. That's her actual size. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to keep her right here on the desk. Yeah. And then... Pocket Anita. Uh, she is. She's a pocket pal. Yeah. Pocket Anita. Right. And, that, and that's how I met her. Very tiny person on an, air, <laughs> on an airplane. She couldn't get her luggage up. I didn't even know who she was. Uh-huh. And I'm like, hey, you want some help? Because I'm as short as you, but I think two of us. And then I picked up my end of her suitcase, and I'm like... Dear God, lady, what are you traveling with? (laughs) Gold bars? Are you going on the Titanic after this? What is in here? She just laughed. and (laughs) Anyway, then we just talked the whole flight and drank screwdrivers and ate Fritos. Yeah, because I asked for Fritos. She goes, you know, I haven't thought about a Frito in forever. And then we just ate all the Fritos. They're so good. You forget about (laughs) Fritos. But let's be friends. Anyway, um, and Queen Tay Tay. Now, some people think I'm selling out, so I've read on YouTube comments. No, I'm not. We're going to talk about why in a little while. I would also like to say that that's probably her actual height with heels, and this is Dolly's actual height, (laughs) and this is Anita's actual height. She's actually this tiny. Nice. (laughs) And everyone else, well, Stevie's the next shortest. Um, So thank you, Sharon. I got the baby Anita, mini Anita. I love it. Pocket Anita. Pocket Anita. The amount of stuff. First, what am I drinking? Well, a Destin beer for Destin Ale. Nice. Um, my cousin Mike and his wife Connie are in love with Destin, Florida. <laughs> they go all the time. Can't get there fast enough. And uh, he told me where to go to, uh, well, two bars. I was already at Lulu's, uh-huh. which there's three Lulu's in yeah, Florida and Alabama. And um, they are Jimmy Buffett's sister, Lucy. They called her, he called her Lulu as a kid. Great fun, always on the beach, and they have this hot sauce I got. It's called Clearly Crazy, but there's garlic in the bottom. Oh, nice. I know, I gave a thing to my friend Bobby, and he was like, this looks like it's going to kill me. This looks like it's ever clear, 151. <laughs> I go, it's not as hot as you would think. It's just delicious, like on chicken. Yep. Um, I met some termites at Lulu's. That was fun. We got a picture. I looked like crap, but... <laughs> Well, I don't run around in the day with makeup on and shit. It's a beach bar. Um, yeah, it was super fun. Um, so that's what we're drinking, the beer from Destin. And so many things um, came backstage. I don't even really know where to start. So many things happened. Well, first I should address why I'm wearing a New Jersey Devils. I was going to ask. Well, because you're going to hear this after the game is over. Today is Monday. The game, the New Jersey Devils will be playing the New York Rangers in hockey. If you don't know hockey, it's game seven. It's a big deal, yeah. and the Blues are my number one team, but the Devils are now my fallback number two team. i got to root for them the whole way because why? The assistant general manager, Kate Madigan, Boom. and she's one of the children. She's very young. She's so, very so she's yeah. very young. Um, so I, de- I, I tweeted her or whatever. Um, Twitter's still good for that, for whatever anybody's <laughs> wondering what it's there for anymore. Um, and she sent me this uh, thing, this uh, hoodie. Awesome. It's very fancy. It's great, this is not cheap. This yeah. is a fancy, fancy. And there were two more shirts in there. Awesome. Yeah. Way to go, Kate Madigan. Very generous. That's right. Women doing shit. Yeah. Um, that's nice. That's good. So I'm rooting for the Devils the whole way. Now, if the Devils get knocked out, mm-hmm. I don't want to jinx it, then I'm going to root for a Canadian team. Thank you. In honor of you paddles. And in honor of Toronto, never, ever get... The Canadians... You know what the problem is? They should never let Canadians play for American teams. And then you would win every year. But they're all spread out. It's called the Olympics. (laughs) It is called the Olympics, I know. And they win every time. Mm. Or there's a problem. Right. Or somebody gets fired that night. (laughs) That happens a lot with you guys. But I don't blame them. That's the one thing you got going. Um, So I'm going to talk about the possum last. First, I'm just going to go through some stuff that sure. came backstage. It was super nice. Nice um, uh, Star, Corey, and Asher. Uh, hot sauce, always welcome. Yep. And they bought this one, original bas- a batch, the Beely Sauce Company. And I have it in this thing. I've already opened it. I've not tasted it yet. 
any kind of hot sauce. That what is the one I love on the road? That store. This sauce I've been recovering. Pepper Palace. Pepper Palace. Yeah. Oh my god. That's really good. Yeah. It's really hot. Holy shit, hot. You gotta be careful, hot. <laughs> um Pensacola, Florida. Actually. Yeah. Beely. No, Sealy. The Sealy Sauce Company. The Brother Schnucks. I like it a lot. Yeah. Maybe one more bite. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We'll put that up. That that was that. Along with um, so much stuff came backstage. Um, Bigfoot bandages. The last thing of bandages I got that a termite sent, I sent them to my parents. They're so excited. They're so excited. Yeah. And my mom just keeps going, we love those band-aids. <laughs> I'm not giving them all the Bigfoot bandages. bandages. Yeah. No, I'll give them a few. Just to spice up their week when they change all their bandages that I don't even know why they're wearing. Um, and some cat stuff. A beer from Pensacola. Um, and then this thing. This is for chicken. It's a Healthy Riles Barbecue and Grilling. Authentic Garlic Jalapeno Rub. Let me see. I had it open before. Oh, yeah. Take the top off. No, I'm going to do that in my hand. And be careful. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't eat it all. It's very hot. I may have to make chicken tonight. <laughs> Just because of that. Making wow. Chicken. No. Grill it. It's so windy, though. I don't really want to be grilling out there. It's so crazy windy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't I don't like the weather lately. No. It's cold and windy, and it's fucking May 1st, and yeah. it's 59 degrees out there and windy, and I talked to my brother in Columbia, Missouri, same thing out there. Just ridiculous. Like, you can't can't go fishing. It's too windy. Golf is bullshit. I guess that's the Lord telling me I'm supposed to be doing real things. Um, Heather brought me p- these French's potato sticks. So nice. far, honest to God, they're the best ones. Really? Uh-huh. Nice. Now I know. I'm going to have to tell my mom and dad. My dad's into it. You know, three heart attacks later. He don't give a shit. No. <laughs> no. You got any more of those uh, potato sticks? Sure, Dad. <laughs> Whatever. You're 82. You have whatever you want. She's a, that and some fry sauce I haven't tasted yet. And um, a t-shirt that says, update. Nice. Yeah, I haven't had time to wash it. I'll show you guys at some point. Um, oh, yeah. more beer from Kurt, Lauren, Carolyn. Um, I met him. Oh, these are the guys I met at Lulu's. Oh, fun. Yeah, and then I met termites in the parking lot, too. I don't want to brag, but I was at the Townsend Suites. <laughs> The night of the show, that was all that was near there. I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah I don't, whatever there's a kitchenette and all that in those places, I figure there's some sort of crime being committed. People are, <laughs> why are you staying this long? You're making like roast beef and shit. I don't, I don't know. It's just not how <laughs> <Roast> I. <laughs> well, there's like a full kitchen in there. It's just, it's, it's I always it's think of pizza, a, there was some law and order where some guy went to go kill himself with a bottle of whiskey, and it was in one that had a kitchenette, and I've never gotten that out of my head. No. Um, they brought uh, beer and all kinds of fun stuff, too, and they were fun to meet. Like That's what I always say. Like, Lewis's fans mm-hmm. are super strange, right? Yeah. My fans, I want to stay with them yeah. at the bar, and yeah. I'm like, shit, I have to go home and take a shower because <laughs> I am doing a show for you right. in three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, my fans are very normal. Well, I'm going to tell you about my fans. Um, uh, Faye and Heather bought the Dolly Funko. Fun. Now I have two. I'm very jealous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can have one. No, it's okay. Or I'm going to send one to my friend Lorene. Well, then I'll take it. Oh, yeah. oh did yeah. you hear that, Lorene? Are you listening? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Those are um super valuable. So thank you, because people spend a lot of money bringing all this stuff backstage. Yeah. And I'm always, <laughs> I'm always sad when it's a super beer weekend and I don't have Michael Somerville. Because my super beer monster, um, they brought uh, grow a Bigfoot, which I'm going to do. I don't have it up here today, but I'm going to grow the Bigfoot. I got a lot of beer backstage. Um, and my the, I had a new opening act, um, Andrew Stanley. Fun. He's very funny. Very, very, very funny. Um, a recommendation from Mr. Aaron Weber. And uh, the, he, he killed it. Yeah. And sometimes it's weird. Like, I don't want people to pay 45 bucks or... 50 bucks, and then if I have an opener that comes out and eats it for 20 minutes, that's not right. That's not fair. They paid, right. But I trust Aaron completely because Aaron does great. 
And Andrew was just great. So go look him up online. If you want to, I saw his video before I hired him. And I'm like, yeah, he's yeah. great. Um, this is Nan from Magnolia Springs, Alabama. She brought Fairhope beer, Fairhope, Alabama, one of the cutest cities ever to exist on earth. Yep. I kid you not. It's right by Mobile. It's in the Bay. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's like a fantasy town. And she brought me a Bucky sticker, which I'm very excited about. Nice. Yeah. My termites had been to their first Bucky experience ever, the ones I met in the yeah. bar. Yeah, oh, yeah, they were very excited. Uh, Lily, Oscar, Linda, Piggly Wiggly Cooler. Who doesn't want one of those? Oh. Um, Wild Leap Beer. Um, that was all good stuff, too. Uh, the Wild Leap. Oh, well, now I was like, I didn't drink that one. Yeah, you did. Well, no, some have a bison on them, and others, then they have, yeah, they have different cans. That's why. I drink the rainbow. Um, and then I got a Stevie Nicks necklace and shit, I forgot to bring it up from Sherry, but I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yep. And then I got a stuffed beagle. Yeah. That's from, uh, Karen because, because I can take it on the road because I can't have a dog. All I can have is whatever animals show up here. <laughs> and then I apparently own them and feed them. But this was the craziest backstage moment ever. Oh, okay. So far, ever, yep. in 35 years. Fun. Um, I was just hanging back there. Uh, this was in Niceville, Florida, which is the nicest place on earth. Yep. The staff, they give me a hat that says Niceville. It's by Destin, sort of by Fort Walton Beach. It's sort of in that area. That The panhandle is kind of ill-defined sometimes. Um, but it's right there. And I was just hanging out with Andrew, and this lady came down walking towards me, with a friend, and she had a, a I like a styrofoam cooler, mm -hmm. and it had beer in there, mm -hmm. which she was, but I didn't know if she worked there right. or she just came in some side door and she was like, "Hi, you know, I'm a I'm a fan. Um, my name's Karen," and she had this picture taped on top of the cooler of a possum <laughs> in what I would describe this outfit. I would call it his wizard outfit. I don't know <laughs> what she calls it. But he has like a satin wizard hat <laughs> and a cape. And um, uh, she said, would love to meet you. Well, she wasn't hard. She just walked backstage. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, lady. Okay. Um, she was very, very nice, though. And I said, is this possum here? She said, yeah, do you want to meet him? And I go, yeah. <laughs> and she went and got him. Um, I It was in her purse. I don't. Her purse, I think, was in the car. Um, and... She pulled him out. Oh, I mean, it was the cutest thing. That video's crazy. Now I want one. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, no. I do. Yeah. No. Yeah, we're going to learn about possums. No. We're going to no. learn a little something. Because oh, I, I, I was sending one. my brother all the pictures and the videos, and he goes, deep down, you are nothing but a fucking redneck. I said, Patrick, just because I like animals, all right, I'm 50% redneck. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not afraid of... That the one on the porch comes up and eats a whole dinner if I leave the food out past five. He just comes, and he's docile. He never, and there's a lot of good things. And this guy, he he was disabled, so nobody judges Karen. And she raised him because he would not survive in the wild. That's nice. It's very nice. But his band, one of his uh, paws was all taped up, and she tried to put him in a different room to sleep other than with her. Mm -hmm. And he got stressed out and, like, tried to eat his own paw. <laughs> so that's not good. Uh, he lives in the house. Um yeah, he only weighed three and a half pounds. I'd say the one on my porch weighs about 12. Yeah, it's big it's big, yeah, way it's bigger big, than yeah. the cats. It's yeah. bigger than the cats. It's horrifying. Um, it, she also, there was beer in the cooler. But you go on my Instagram and all that, you can see the video Schnotes. of me and the schnotes, me meeting um, Roman. And as we go further on, we're going to learn a little something about possums later. Where do you buy a possum outfit? <laughs> I don't know where she gets these outfits. He has a cowboy hat. In the video, his cowboy hat kept falling off. This one, he looks like a wizard, like he's Merlin the Magician or something. Um, I didn't see this outfit. I like it, though. It's kind of Liberace-like. Um, and he's so sweet. He fell asleep in my arms. They're just so... They're. I know. Everybody's freaked out because of their teeth. Well, the tail is kind of rat-like. You got to get beyond the tail. It's not rat-like. Maybe like a dog, you could just get rid of that. But they probably use it. <laughs> if 
Oh, well, I don't know. People I take know. tails off dogs all the time. It's awful. Well, I, uh, it's not my thing. My sister's Australian Shepherd doesn't have a tail. It drives my dad fucking nuts. <laughs> it's not a dog. What happened to its tail? Well, Dad, it just doesn't. Ah, bullshit. If it doesn't have a tail, it's not a dog. Well, look at Buster. What do you think he is? He's sitting there going. Ar, 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 ar. Mm-hmm. Jack Madigan's not going along with the no tail thing. Yeah, anyway. To hear about <laughs> all right. We're moving on to the show now. Now that we got through all that. Um, uh, here's why we're inducting Tay Tay. Now, some people on YouTube said I was selling out. I don't know why they'd say that. Because their concerts are expensive, maybe. Maybe. That's why. They are expensive. I know this. Yeah. But it's a three-hour show, and it's I don't know. Hard. I don't know what happened on that Ticketmaster deal when it got screwed up. We talked about it on the podcast. We did, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It still didn't make sense. As much as I know that's more than normal people about Ticketmaster, it still didn't make sense. The young term. It's for the young, it's for the children. Yeah, the children is the world. And I mean, I like her. Yeah. I, I got tickets. The last time she went on tour, I got them for my nieces, the twins. And my sister took them. And this is how rural my nieces are. Yep. They'd never been to any kind of concert mm-hmm. at all. They, they think St. Louis is like Hong Kong when they go <laughs> in, okay? And their idea of a concert, they were probably only 11, I guess, um, or 12 at the oldest, they, I said, okay, well, we got you tickets um, in Kansas City to go see her. And they were like, oh, that's so awesome. What song is she going to sing? What? They think it's like YouTube. She just sings one song oh and it's my over. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. And I thought, Taylor probably doesn't know that. She could get away with that with a third of the <laughs> office. Uh, when you're in rural areas, go to Kansas City, Oklahoma City. You can just come out and do a half hour. And everybody's like, that was awesome. <laughs> what do you want to hear? <laughs> No, it's just so naive that it was cute that they really thought you just go and your YouTube friend comes out yeah. and does one thing mm-hmm. and then the night's over. Night. Yeah. <laughs> well, my sister said they didn't even need Taylor to come out. They were so in awe of what happened to Arrowhead Stadium for Taylor's <laughs> thing or whatever. That's Here's why I like Tay Tay. Um, I like a lot of the songs. I'm not, like my sister would say, I'm a bandwagon person, which is true with Taylor. It took me a while to you catch on. I know songs now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for being one of the children, mm-hmm. she's young, under 40. She does an immense amount of charity work. Great. Yes. Yes. Like some of these people just don't do shit. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if you make it public. You should make it public. Yes. And then pressure other people to do some nice stuff with all this money. Right. She's making generous donations to food banks and cities when she's visiting during her era tour. Just another one of her numerous good deeds from over the years. Ahead of her first performance in Vegas on March 24th, the Three Fair Square Food Bank in Las Vegas revealed via Instagram that the folklore artist had made a donation. Um, we don't know about you, but we're feeling grateful on this day. Taylor Swift made a generous donation. Thank you, Ms. Swift, to supporting our mission and our local community. She makes sure everyone benefits when she goes. She goes, so she goes to all the local food banks. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, she just did it in Florida, too. Um, she also participated, she's 33 years old, in the UNICEF TAP Project Initiative by joining other celebrities and selling water from their home homes in order to raise more than 2.5 million people who don't have access to clean water. Um, Florida, she just gave a shit ton of money, the Tampa yeah. thing. Somebody, a termite, tweeted me that. Um She's uh, awesome. She also, in 2017, she gave a generous sum of money to Mariska Hardigay's Joyful Foundation, whatever that is. Um, so she's spreading the money around, which is nice to hear. Um, during COVID-19, she donated to the World Health Organization and Feeding America. Meanwhile, in her country home of Nashville, she paid for three months of health insurance for the entire staff of the local record, core, record store, Grimey's, which I've been to a million times, which was struggling to stay off. She paid for all her health insurance. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, she's covered tuition fees for struggling so- tuition fees for struggling college students and even bought one fan a house. Wow. <laughs> Why? Do you hear that, Stevie? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tanya, you're off the hook on this one. I don't think you're in the same monetary category. Share, you're not well now that you got that new boyfriend spending all your money. I'll leave you alone, but (laughs) 
The Florida one, that's going to bother me. I'll find it for next week because I, I screenshot it, I think, and then I don't know. I don't want to turn my phone on because it's going to go. Hardy Gay's in, and she did Law and Order, she's talking about sexual assault and domestic violence. Oh, domestic violence, sexual so assault. Good job, yeah. good job, good job. Yeah. Mm. I like it. Moving on. No more queen news. We have Pocket Anita, Tay Tay. Everybody else is still here. Cher's been very quiet. Yeah. Tanya's got a new album coming out. We already talked about that. And Stevie... I'm hoping resurfaces in May. Right. It, well, it's May 1st. Yeah. Because I'm buying tickets to go somewhere. <laughs> and oh, wow. I hope this isn't another one of the, um, the, the senior turtles breaking down. I don't. No. no. It's not her time. I don't think so either. No. She seems healthy. I don't know, though. Canceling a whole month. That seems weird. Yeah. Just saying. I'm not here to start rumors. Well, technically I am. Oh, and I had a Coachella update from my friend Bronson. Well, he loved it. Um, he loved it, but he fell asleep in, in the grass and didn't get to Bjork. He missed <laughs> Bjork. Yeah. But I'm like, that's when you know you had a good time. When you fell asleep in the grass, lost your sunglasses, and missed the headliner you went to go see. And he didn't even care. That's what's so great about being young. Don't even give a shit. I'd be like, I did what? Are you kidding me? God damn it. I'd be so mad. He went back again the next weekend. Oh, my God. Yeah, and this is when you know they're young, too. I go, do you have a ticket? He's like, no. Driving from L.A. to Palm Springs. Oh, my God. You can't get me to go there if you pay me no. cash money. I'm like, I ain't driving that drive. No. The traffic's awful. <clears throat> yeah, and they, they bought a wristband off somebody and went again because that Frank Ocean got fired, who I thought was oh, Billy Ocean. Yeah. I'm like, why would everybody want to hear Caribou Queen? I didn't like it when it came out. It's, it's still Caribbean Queen. Caribou Queen. Caribou. Queen. Caribou. <laughs> Caribou's a reindeer. <laughs> Caribbean Queen. Caribou Queen. <laughs> Caribou. It's better. It's Come a, on, Caribou it's Queen's better. It's a song in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Caribou. a mating call. Caribou Queen. So um, he told me though oh <laughs> that. The guy that was in charge of this group of friends, oh he planned pop up tents and all this stuff. Wow. And well, this is, and somebody, what time you had to cook up, get up and cook breakfast? It's like camping with extra people. I said, I brought and I don't think I could. I'm afraid to camp in the desert because of snakes yeah. and tarantulas. Yeah. Well, I didn't know they don't attack you, whatever, whatever. I don't care. I'm terrified of them. And he said that he even agrees. The really? next time he'll get a hotel room. Oh. Yeah, he didn't love the camping thing. And and he's young. Yeah. Well, you'd have to stay in Palm Springs or Indigo or something like Indio or whatever, and then Uber somewhere, yeah. and then start walking. Hope you have comfortable shoes on, not flip-flops. That's a lot. Yep. That's a lot. All right. Update! <sighs> You're not going to like this battle. Elizabeth Holmes has delayed her sentencing. I, you know, but only till ugh. Wednesday, I think. The, the, they have till Wednesday to respond. She's such... She filed a last-minute thing saying she should be allowed to stay out on appeal while they, um, she, while they appeal her case, she should be allowed to be free. Now, Sonny tried that, her partner, and it didn't work, and he had to report to the Popo. This judge said, we need to at least respond look at this before we say no again because he believes there are some improprieties. I do not. I think Lizzie's going to the popo. Yeah. A uh, pokey, not the popo. That's the cops. Um, she's going to the pokey, I think. And yeah. it's when he says so, I think by Wednesday we'll know. It's only Monday, so whenever you hear this podcast, it's before that. It'll probably We'll probably know it by the time this comes out. I can't do another update if I'm already done with this. I'll do a live update. Update! Oh, my God. Bob, Clark, my friends, are you listening? Bed Bath Beyond is closing, and we all know that. But don't throw out your coupons. What? Don't throw them out. They won't take them. Big lots in the container store are taking them. Whoa. I don't go in big lots that often, and there's one by my house. Maybe I'll go in there and see what's in there. I went with my mom one time, and this is all I remembered. The Rams. 
had moved to St. Louis. Yeah. And they were selling L.A. Rams coats in big lots in St. Louis. Oh. Yeah. Now, if you'd have held on to that jacket, they eventually became the L.A. Rams again. Correct. It just seemed strange. Okay. I don't know. It's an off jacket. Wednesday, April 26th was the last day you could use your 20% off Bed Bath & Beyond coupons. But today said that uh, Fox News reported that Big Lots and Container Store are taking old or expired coupons with special terms and conditions. Don't hold me hostage, termites. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the can- Container Store said that it will accept a competitor's blue c- coupon at any of its 97 U.S. stores through May 31st. It will be good for 20% off a single item. Oh, it's only one. You can't go get like a whole shitload of stuff. Right. right. Um, Big Lots said it would accept Bed Bath & Beyond coupons through May 7th. You get 20% off their purchase of $50 or more at any big lots. They have 1,425 stores across the United States. Wow. Yeah. Um, the company filed for 2011. We know all that. I'm sorry to see. You know, I drove by mine because I was going to make a video, mm-hmm. and I thought it had like a week left, and it was closed, closed. Yep. And it was a little sad. Yeah. There was a little tinge in my heart. You know what I was not sad seeing going away? Toys are us, and I don't know why you spelled everything backwards when children are trying to learn how to read. Why's your R backwards? <laughs> Knock it off. That place drove me ape shit. if you Babies had kids that us. you had to take in there. Um, yeah. yeah. But Bad Bath & Beyond, it made me sad. Well, it made me sad because I don't know where my guy with the squirrel that he dresses up like a pioneer lady in the stroller. I'm feeling Walmart. I don't think he's got the money for Target. I think he's going to have to drop down. I uh, I'm going to go to the Walmart because sometimes I sneak over there, even though my father would kill me, <laughs> for the giant cat food bag. Um, and they have a good cat toy aisle. Cat food bag? Yeah, I buy the giant. Big bag of yeah, and then I tried to check out with the giant. It's like a 20-pound bag of Purina cat chow. <laughs> and it wasn't ringing up, and the lady goes, you sure you didn't bring that in with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I did. I figured here's how I'm going to steal <laughs> A 20-pound, totally, totally not obvious bag of cat food. I'm like, ma'am, I'm not trying to steal the cat food. It's not my fault your machines suck and it's not ringing up. Um, Yeah, whatever. I don't like going in there. I don't like how they treat their employees, but sometimes I have to if I've got to go again. Um, Update! (coughs) Demon Dog Ralphie excels at agility training, and he's going to do amazing things. He's like sea biscuit in the shape of a pig. So great. That's what he said. This, if you didn't, if you don't keep up with the podcast, this is a, a dog, a French bulldog that nobody wanted to adopt because it was mean as shit. And the mm-hmm. and the uh, the ASP the SPCA called it a fire breathing whole jerk, not even half of a jerk of a dog. And then they went through this whole <laughs> thing about don't take him if you just think he needs love. But the videos, if you follow him on Instagram, Ralphie the Demon Dog, he's doing great. Really? Yeah, he's not biting anymore. Um, this guy, Jason's like a miracle worker, and it's in Tennessee somewhere. That's great. Um, he's just doing, he immediately got on, along with other dogs, the other dogs, showing off his innate social skills and an evolving understanding of boundaries. Mm-hmm. Oh, Good job. Nice. He knows when to push, and he also knows when to back away. Um, he, had, he had to be very careful. So that's your little update. Ralphie's doing great. He's thriving in Tennessee. Um, and he's going to learn tricks, including skateboarding and agility training. Fantastic. There's a picture of him on a skateboard. He understands how to stand on it. Really? He doesn't understand how to push it yet, at least from the videos this guy's posting, like and they're good. Some of the other dogs seem worse than Ralphie. I think Ralphie got a bad, bad, bad. <laughs> bad rap. Yeah, he got a total bad rap. <laughs> um, update! <laughs> Since we're on an animal roll, mm-hmm. remember the cocaine cat in Cincinnati? Well, he's recovering just fine at the Cincinnati Zoo, and he will become a cat ambassador. Whoa. Many be, may be familiar with Cocaine Bear, the comedy thriller based on the true story of a black bear found dead near a duffel bag loaded with $2 million worth of cocaine. But have you, had a co- have you heard of Cocaine Cat? There's no movie yet, but thankfully his story has a happy ending. Earlier this year, a 35-pound, 35-pound African serval, a serval cat, they have big ears, mm-hmm. yeah. Named Amory, escaped from a car that police had pulled over from a traffic stop in Cincinnati. Oh Somebody God. was taking this thing out for a ride. <laughs> I don't even take baby cat in the car, never. Um, the freaked out feline ran up a tree 
during the rescue by local animal control, he broke his slender leg. He was admitted to Cincinnati Animal Care where the medical team tested him for narcotics. The hospital explained on Facebook, this has become a standard procedure for exotic animals after we seized custody of Neo, a capuchin monkey who tested positive for meth. Oh, my God. What are people doing? I don't know. That was in 2022. They soon discovered that Amory was strung out on cocaine. In Ohio, it's illegal to own several cats, not to mention snorting cocaine. Amory's owner was not arrested, but he did have to relinquish relinquish the cat to the Cincinnati Zoo. Why wasn't he arrested? First of all, it's illegal to have the cat. Right. Second of all, it's coked up. It did not buy the cocaine. It doesn't have any money. It doesn't have a wallet. No, you bought the cocaine. Yes. Yeah. His health has improved after receiving care in our veterinary facility. We were able to move him to the Cat Ambassador Program area. Yesterday, his leg is still recovering. They'll keep an eye on that before allowing him to run, jump, or engage in other activities that might impair the healing. They will concentrate on helping him acclimate to a new environment and his new team of care. (laughs) How did Amory get the blow? The police are still investigating if the ingestion of cocaine was accidental or forced. Well, whatever. That means the guy had it. Right. Charges against his former owner are still on the table. They don't have time for all this. The serval is a wild cat native to Africa. It has a small head, large ears, a golden yellow uh, yellow coat spotted with striped uh, striped with black and a short black nip black tip tail. It has the longest legs of any cat relative to its body size. They can cost anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred. Oh my god! I would think they'd be more. Uh, I can honestly yeah. say I don't know anyone that's ever owned one. No, well, maybe my accountant. <laughs> yeah. Sherry. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> One time I asked my accountant, Sherry, why'd you move from Petoskey, Michigan to Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri? Seems weird. A weird move. Mm-hmm. She said, oh, because Missouri had much, la- much uh, their, anim- their laws for animal exot- exotic animals were much laxer. Oh, my God. I'm like, what kind of animals <laughs> did you really have, Sherry? Too. Yeah, she's very smart. She's like, she had, she had lions and tigers. And everything. She, she knew. She knew. Um, what's his face? Joe Exotic. She yeah. knows the whole racket of all that. Oh, yeah, it was very God. interesting. Yeah. So don't worry about Cocaine Cat. They're fixing right. his leg. And. Uh, He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Wow. Update. <laughs> trader update. We haven't had a trader update. Whoa. This couple fascinated me the most because it was a mom and her son. Tennessee folks. They were known as the zip tie, the t- zip tie guys. Well, guys and gal, I guess, or whatever you want. A Tennessee man and his mother were convicted on Tuesday of charges. They stormed the Capitol where they br- brought plastic zip tie handcuffs into the Senate gallery as a mob attacked the building. Uh, yeah, they were found guilty on all 10 counts in their indictment, including a charge that they conspired to obstruct just Congress from certifying Joe Biden's electoral visit, uh, victory on January 6th. They haven't been sentenced yet. Yep. Our goal at the end of the day was to show the court that it, uh, that so that they're accepting responsibility. Yeah, oh, not really. Like, no. no. Um, he's thirty two. Oh, and the mom is fifty nine. Wow. How do you decide to do that for fun? Is no. you, you, with your parents? You're a terrible example. Hey, mom, what do you got going on on January sixth? <laughs> Want to go up and zip tie Nancy Pelosi to a pole? Hmm? <laughs> How about Mitch McConnell? Let's get Mitch. Oh, they said they gleefully entered the Capitol during a riot. And they also had a stun gun. Um, she said she'd rather die. This is at the time she was 57. As a 57-year-old woman than live under oppression. I'd rather die. I would rather fight. Okay. Well, how'd that work out? <laughs> yeah. So I will let you know when they get sentenced. We'll see how long you go to jail for that. Update! Now, this is important, termites. This is very important. I did it. It only takes five minutes or less if you're better with a computer than I am. I'm going to put in the schnotes. You can apply for your share of Facebook's $725 million settlement in the privacy suit. Great. Here's the deal. If you maintained an account between May 2007 and December uh, uh, of 2022, you can submit submit a claim for their share of the $725 million class action settlement. Now, who knows? 
It could end up being 18 bucks, but it depends on how many people sign up. Sure. And a lot of people are lazy and they won't do it. And we're going to put this in the, in the show notes, the show notes as a link. And this is from CNBC. So they're not fucking around here. Okay. It's the real, and I did it and it went to the real link and you can get it in a, um, like the can send you your settlement, like in a, uh, a, a visa gift card. You don't even have to give because I'm like, wait, is this real? Am I giving banking info Some to? Weird check. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I'm, am I turning into my mom? I don't know. I gave all my banking information <laughs> yes. to a Facebook thing. Well, I don't know that. Yep. <laughs> this is from them harvesting the data of over 87 million Facebook users. Oh God. Mm-hmm. So you got to ent- you have till August 25th to do it. Yeah. We'll put it in, and then I'll give you a reminder come summer. If you're too lazy to do it now, because that's, that's where the part of me that I know why I didn't do good in school. I mean, it did fine, but I didn't do great. Cause as soon as I saw August 25th, I was like, oh, well, I don't have to do it now, <laughs> Right. but you know what? Why not Kathleen? It's a link. It takes five minutes and I did it. So there you go. Get your money from fuckerberg. Moving on to our holy shit. They found it yes. segment. We're going to do. They do not say how old this girl is, but I'm assuming if there's a girl under 21. Girl discovers largest Viking treasure hoard in Denmark in 50 years. Wow. Yep. The biggest discovery of Viking treasure in Denmark in a half a century. She's credited with finding 300 coins. Can you imagine that? I don't even think I have 300 coins in this house. Probably not. The pieces of silver are believed to be at least a thousand years old and were found near an old Viking castle associated with one of the era's most famous rulers. According to a press release by the Historical Museum of North Jutland, the rare discovery was made in Denmark's northwestern region, approximately five miles from Furkat, a Viking ring castle. The treasure consisted of two separate hordes located less than 50 meters apart. They were once close together, but modern plowing and... uh, Sewing spread them over a larger area. Around wow. 300 pieces were ultimately moved and uh, removed, uncovered. 50 were fully intact. 50, wow. a thousand years old. They weren't just Danish coins either. The hordes dating back to the n- 980s, the year wow. 980, also contained Arab and German currency. During this time, King Harold Blanton, better known as Harold Bluetooth, wasn't he futuristic? <laughs> Was in power. The currency <laughs> that circulated during his reign featured an image of a cross and a symbol that's been noted on the coins discovered by an amateur metal detectorist. Again, somebody with a metal detector. She was nice. And this is, the Vikings must have already been converted. Somebody was converted to Christianity yeah. because they put the cross. By the way, at the NFL draft, everybody that got picked thanked Jesus, and I think that's nice. Mm-hmm. But when the first person that got picked by the Vikings, I wanted that kid to thank Odin. Because <laughs> I've watched Vikings on the History Channel. And I wanted to say, to, I wanted him to say, I'm not ready to go to Valhalla yet, but when I get there, I want to give a shout out to Odin and all the other gods, just because it'd be funny. Just funny. The girl was nine. The dis- she was nine? Oh my God. The discovery was made in autumn of 2022, but only publicly revealed this April. Along with the two coins, two pieces of silver jewelry from either Ireland or Scotland were also uncovered. That's because your people, Paddles, Mm -hmm. your Viking side, your half Norwegian, um, came over to our peaceful little islands and raped and pillaged. I hope you're proud of yourself. Absolutely. You proud? Yeah. Uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. They date to the same period as the castle. Uh Uh-huh. It's believed the jewelry was collected during a raiding expedition, which it was taken for its weight in silver rather than its artistic details. That's why the ring pin was chopped into pieces. It wasn't uncommon for Vikings to bury their treasure during times of war and instability for safekeeping only to never return for it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's what you all did. Yep. Yep. And if you watch watch the first Vikings, which was on History Channel, I've been watching Vikings Valhalla. Good. It's great. I'm never going to, you're always going to miss Ivar the Boneless. I mean, yeah, the and Rag now. The season, the first Vikings was yeah. so, so, so great. But this one's really good. I mean, I'll give it an A. Okay. The other one got an A+. Plus, so, there you go. An A plus. Holy shit. 
This should be called, holy shit, they saw it. But it counts. Uh, A, quote, extinct lion spotted in Chad National Park. A lion has been spotted in Chad's Senna Ora National Park where the big cats have not been seen since 2004, almost 20 years, and were believed to be extinct until now. There's a picture of this uh, lioness. She is awesome looking. A picture of a lioness was released by a team of conservationists from the Chad government and the New York Wildlife uh, Conservation Society. Um Photograph shows a ver- shows a prime, very healthy adult lion. It's around five years old. I'm sure she's not alone. The image taken by a remote camera in the protected area back in February was released on Thursday. This is a huge, this is hugely encouraging because prime females are the foundation of any population, and they are not big wanderers. They inhabit the areas that have been, that have prey or safe to raise their cubs. He noticed that her presence her presence was an early sign of lions recovering in the Adation Park National Park in Cameroon. That's awesome. Yeah. Dr. Hunter said there are about 22,000 to 24,000 lions left in the wild, the vast majority of which are classified as this. That's a lot. Yeah. It's not a lot, you think? That's not a lot. 25,000? Well, it depends on how we're going to, if we're going to let these jack straws, some dentist from Minnesota go, you know, yeah, I'm not going to get in that fight. I'm not getting in that fight, but I you know, when they say, oh, well, it helps the local economy, economy. Why don't you just give them some goddamn money yeah. instead of, you don't need to. And I don't think you need to pick on Minnesota. Well, I'm not picking on Minnesota, actually. I think, he, I think he, anyway. no, he's either from Michigan or Minnesota. I remember that. He's from an yeah. M state. True. He's from the middle. Or Texas. No, he's a northerner. Okay. There are, only, there are fewer than 1,000 uh, northern lions in West and Central Africa, and they are especially endangered and precious. The other ones are in the south. I've never called a lion precious. Well, I would call them precious. Precious. Yes. Yes, so they're precious. <laughs> they're precious. We need them out there to kill all the other bad things. They're probably the only thing that can escape a hippo. You know, none of my other friends know that. <laughs> I could. Everyone should know that. The hippo's the most dangerous animal on earth. I could do with a few less hippos, and so could Columbia. They're trying to get rid of Pablo's hippos. Hippos are a problem. They are a goddamn problem, and they're vicious. Problematic hippos. <laughs> Arky, holy shit, they found it. This is crazy. This is crazy. I've never even heard of this group of people. Archaeologists have unveiled the first known sculptures of human figures made by the Tartessos people a lost civilization that flourished in southern Spain some 3,000 years ago that has been linked to the myth of Atlantis. Wow. You know who really was a big fan of Atlantis? Who? Shirley MacLaine. What? The actress. She wrote all of her books on ethereal things like that. She wrote books? Shirley MacLaine? Yeah. I bought her first one immediately. Out on a limb. I read it. I liked it. She's kind of crazy, but, you know. She's nuts. Well, you just got to go with it. Okay. She's so good in terms of endearment. You just, oh, the lady wrote a book. Oh, boy. But she believed in Atlantis. She tried to go there. Huh. Yeah, but it's mythical. It's, so, you know, your problem. plane's going to end somewhere. Yeah. And it's probably not going to be there. According to researchers, they are likely depictions of gods and warriors. This is amazing. The, discover of five re- the discovery of five reliefs of human faces. They, have, they, like, they look like human faces, these statues. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, they vanished around 2,500 to 3,000 years ago, these people, though they produced an abundance of gorgeous artifacts. Uh, these are the first human represent, uh, representations evacuated at the site, adding a surprising new layer to our understanding of this vibrant culture. Culture. The unusual thing is that the new finding is the representations correspond to human faces. Uh, it's a huge, profound uh, shift in the interpretation of the Tartessos people who were traditionally considered an an iconic culture for representing divinity through animals or plant motifs. So they didn't do human faces. You got to see the pictures of these. Um, They thrived in southern Iberia for several centuries. This rich culture seems to have fallen off the face of the planet not too long after Casas del Torinello was burned to the ground. Some experts have speculated that collapse in the mining and metalworks trade Dealt, dealt, dealt an economic blow. That's not enough to get rid of a people. No. Just because you can't 
do metalworking? What? <laughs> Other scholars, I'm with these guys, mm-hmm. suggest that earthquakes and tsunamis inflicted widespread floods and damage to their settlements from which the civilizations never recovered. I'm, I'm more on that one, not because we ran out of metalwork. Right. Mm. They may be the origin of the legend of Atlantis, although others in the uh, academic community have called these claims fanciful and complete madness. Oh, stop. It's not complete madness. Yeah, so they found it. (laughs) Moving on to news. Moving on to news, folks. Shirley MacLaine was a writer. Shirley MacLaine wrote all kinds of books. I didn't know that. Yeah, she was on Oprah all the time um, yakking about them. She was very, like, I don't know, maybe in the 90s or something. Um, she wrote, yeah, there's a bit of narcissism going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it takes all kinds. Um, can we talk? Oh, this is, this. All right. And I don't even, I can't even blame this on the children. This is astonishing to me. Climate change protesters target famous sculpture at National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Now, I'm going to put the video in the notes. Okay. National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. says the FBI is involved in an investigation after climate change protesters targeted a famous sculpture, Edgar Degas, Little Dancer, age 14. Photos show the activists on Thursday smeared red and black paint on a plexiglass enclosure that housed the sculpture. So it didn't get to the sculpture. Okay. But when you see the video, they're there for a good five minutes. Where is security? I don't understand it because there's a man that walks by, behind them mm-hmm. in the back of the video. He looks like security. Right. And I'm like, are you not aware that they have finger paint all over their hands and they're going like this to the plexiglass? I mean, it's clearly, it's not subtle. No. No. <laughs> they swear, uh, the gallery said the experts are assessing the actual sculpture for damage. Well, they didn't get in beyond the plexiglass, but the fact that they got in there with paint yeah. and did all this and you guys didn't do anything. Right. Mm-hmm. It's uh, far from the first chaotic stunt. And they did not look young. They were over 40. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're mad about climate change. Well, I just don't think this is a way to get people on your side. No. By f- trying to destroy um, such historical works. Uh, artworks are carefully guarded under protective glass, keeping them from being damaged. Right. But they got that far. Right. Earlier they had... Targeted Vincent van Gogh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, The Scream by Edward Munch. I wow. mean, yeah. So they're at it again. <sighs> like I said, why? Well, how about security right. when you go in? Right. I think if you go in, I haven't. Super paint. I'm trying to think of the last art museum I was in. It was probably Andy Warhol's in yeah. Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go through a security thing, though, but you'd think they might want to do that. Like, just see what, what if I bring my big old work purse in there with a, paint gun. With a possum? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um, this is kind of crazy, fascinating. Yes. And I've got two things on this. <sighs> a 1912 linen map of the Titanic used for an inquiry into the famed ocean liner's sinking, has sold at auction for $243,000. Wow. Would you pay it? No. I don't know. That's kind of cool. That doesn't matter. Well, I would frame it. It should be in a museum. It's, well, this is just a linen map they used in court. I mean, it's not like the 33-foot-long, ooh, I don't have a frame that big. Michael's is not. I don't I don't trust Michael's. I I, you imagine going into Michael's going, this is a linen map of the Titanic disaster. Um, I have a 50% off coupon. I know they don't even say it's only on Fridays because that's bullshit. We all know all these coupons are good every goddamn day. And uh, I know you're going to tell me it's 50% off, and that's what the price probably should have been. And I'm going to check out, and then there's a framing. Yeah. No. Here's the thing with Michael's. You can luck out and get somebody really good or... You can get me, who right. doesn't understand math and is, like, confident, though. <laughs> I got it. And then you come back and all your shit's crooked, and you're like, you don't see that? No. Like, that's so... There's a problem. Yeah. They always redo it, though, for nothing, so it's worth a try. I guess. Uh, it's a 33-foot-long map prepared by the White Star Line's Naval Architects Department. Still has the red and green chalk marks that showed where the fateful iceberg 
broke through the five of the massive ship's watertight bulkheads, according to CNN. The auction house that sold the artifact, um, Henry Aldridge and Sun Limited, told the network in a statement the map was quite simply one of the most important and well-documented pieces of Titanic memorabilia in existence today. The item's hefty, hefty selling price reflects not only the rarity of the material, but the enduring appeal of the Titanic sto- story. She sank 111 years ago, but the memory of those passengers and crews lives on through the memorabilia. Wow. The Titanic, the largest ocean liner of its era, struck an iceberg in 1912, uh, uh, killing more than 1,500 people and stranding hundreds of others in the frigid waters. Now, here's what's crazy. Hold on, I have to find the next one. And now I've gone down the rabbit hole on Amazon Prime and Netflix and everything else. Nothing wrong with that. Well, because I, I bought this book and I already read it. Oh, my God. Yep, I read it on the plane. But now i got to find it. Hold on. It's not in the business section. Um, so, this guy wrote a book. Uh, shit, I should have brought it up. I'm going to mail it to my nephew. He wants it. Um, Schnotes. I'll put it in the shows. Um, why the Titanic may have been cursed before it even set sail. Um, uh, uh, there was a sense of gloom that hung over the Titanic before she even left. Rumored aboard was a cursed Egyptian mummy's coffin lid. What? Yeah, I oh ain't going. God. I'm not going on that ship if I know that. Now, it's rumored. The book I read, it's called like Titanic's Omens, Omens and something, something, something. Um, it's not that big of a book, but it's really good. There were a million things, but the problem is everybody didn't know all those things. So you're bebopping down. It left from Belfast. It went to Southampton, England. Then it went to Cherbourg, France. Then it went to what used to be called Queensland, which is really Cobb, which is close to Cork, but it's not Cork, Ireland. And what's weird is if you go to Cobb in Ireland, they have a museum. All the pictures that we see of the Titanic, those people got off the ship there. Or they got off in France. They could have ridden it, ridden it from in, from Southampton to Cherbourg and taken a bunch of pictures. But everybody else died, right. or their cameras were fucked up. Like they didn't. Um, so those were the lucky people. But when you read, there was like fifty people that did not board that ship because of weird sh- things. The craziest thing of all. So this guy, he sees this cat that's like messed up and it's pregnant and. He, he was one of the underbelly crew. He worked in the bottom, and he thought, I'm going to sneak this cat on. Mm-hmm. And he did. Yep. And the, so it, they haven't left yet. And then I, it took like two days to get ready to leave. And one of his friends goes, hey, dude, your cat had her kittens, and she's out of here. And she oh. was carrying her kittens down the gangplank. Oh, wow. Like she left a warm bed. And he said, I just saw that and thought, I ain't got to get off this thing if that cat knows there's something going on yeah. and for a dude to admit that like um 50 passengers had such strong forebodings they refused to board at the last minute and they lost the price of their ticket wow. that's got to be that's a lot of money yeah and they didn't even know this stuff like some people heard oh there's an, a mummy coffin lid that can't be good luck but then a lot of people didn't hear that piece of information. Other people had heard that there had been a fire on board before it even took off right. and that the one side wasn't whatever. All these warnings and stuff. The book was just great. Uh, um, the, Ed, the captain, he'd already been involved in five major accidents. Okay. Wow. What's going on, bourbon captain? Who's up there <laughs> drinking bourbon, hitting shit all the time? Captain five? Morgan. Five? Captain I've been driving a boat since I was see, like, it's Captain Morgan. I've been driving boats since I was twelve. I've never hit another boat. Nope. Knock on wood. I'll probably hit one this summer. Yeah. Um, he also ran several ships aground. Hit by hit by a, hit a tugboat in New York Harbor, and had been rammed by the warship. He confessed to friends he felt jinxed, or maybe you shouldn't be drinking and driving a boat, or get some glasses. All of the psychics told everybody not to go. But here's what's even crazier. <laughs> Listen to this shit. Like 12 years before the Titanic was even built or named, mm-hmm. a man wrote a book called like the the the, the Voyage of the Titan. Okay. He used the word Titan. He just made it up. Wow. And the whole story is it hits an iceberg and half the people die because it doesn't have enough lifeboats. What? Yep. Wow. And then everybody decided that guy was a psychic, and he's probably the only person in the history of the world went. No, no, I was just doing the math that there's probably going to hit an iceberg. Wow. 
He, he kept saying, I don't want to be at your psychic convention. I'm not a psychic. Most people would be like, oh, yeah, I, I, to, I totally know all that. Um, yeah, this guy. Um, this one Irish astrologer, Count Lewis Heyman, known as Cheerio. Cheerio. He was Cheerio. He cautioned this super rich British newspaper editor. He said, I see more than a thousand people, you among them, struggling desperately in the water. They're screaming for help and fighting for their lives. It does none of them any good, yourself included. That dude went. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, he was last seen reading a book in first class smoking room as chaos unfolded around him. I got to get you guys the name of this, but I thought this was from that book. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's omen, Titanic omens and something else. Um, if you believe in all that stuff, there was a lot of crazy. The book that that man wrote, though, Titanic disaster, omens, mysteries, and misfortunes of the doomed liner. Okay, we'll put it in the notes. Yeah, the omens and mysteries and, yeah. Okay, great. Yep. Um, yeah, that one's good. All right, do you have $190,000? Nope. Laying around? No. No? No. Or I'd be going to Tay-Tay. Or you would be going to Tay-Tay. Yep. J.J. Watt's going to try to go to all of them. All the Taylor Swift Boy, he's joking with his wife on Instagram, but it's funny. He likes her a lot. See, I love that. Uh-huh. And I love J.J. Wiley. I love all the Watt brothers. Yep. Football players, if you don't keep up. If you have $190,000, how does this appeal to you? It appeals to me a lot. Yep. I would love to do it. But I'm not in the area, sadly. <laughs> See how they... Scotland's Bar Loco Island is up for sale. You can get an uninhabited island of your own is selling for a song, but it's trick a bit tricky getting there. It's oh, located okay. off the southern coast of Scotland and six miles from the nearest town. It's on sale for $190,000. A lush green island, which stretch, stretches for about 25 acres, has no homes or buildings on it, but boasts a pebble beach where a flood pl- uh, and a flood pond where rainwater waters gather for wildlife during the winter months. For a U.S. buyer to get the island, they need to fly to Glasgow, I've been there. Take a two-hour drive to the nearest town, which is called Gatehouse of Fleet. From there, it would be a six-mile boat ride to Barclow. Okay. Bar Loco? Loco. What a... Go, 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 go. The island can also be accessed during low tide by an all-terrain vehicle or on foot over a rocky path. Okay. Yeah. Get a four-wheeler. Right. Six miles. Side by side. Side by side, right. Get yourself one of those World War II helmets and a scarf and look hilarious. <laughs> Come on. This trip is in a brief. Like Snoopy. Yeah. It's totally Snoopy Snoopy dog. Get your little dog, put him in there. Or your possum. Whatever you whatever you got. Roman, the possum I met, would love to do it. The trip isn't a breeze for locals either. The nearest train station uh, in Dumfries is about an hour bus ride from the gatehouse of Fleet. Yeah. The agent handling the sale. Said he's optimistic about buyers interested in the land, which stands at the westernmost isle, uh, island of the Isles of Fleet. There's still a very romantic sentiment attached to owning your own very Scottish private, it was very uh, uh, Scottish private island, where you could escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life and enjoy some peace and tranquility. Can I uh, Airbnb this? Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> you know what'd be fun though is like if you bought it and you had a good camping set up like you could bring on the four-wheeler like a tent and good stuff and food for a few days yep. whatever there's no dangerous animals out here sure. so i wouldn't be scared of camping right. and then people i don't think anybody not anybody but many many people do not know what it is like to hear nothing i went to the Aran islands in ireland Very cool. and i went to the biggest one i didn't even go to the small there's three and I, I, there might be a fourth tiny one that nobody goes to i don't know whatever uh, Inishmore, I think, is the one I went to. And at night, there's no cars. I mean, there's a couple cars on the island, but it's mostly horses. And it stays light till like, 10 o'clock at night, maybe 11. And you just hear... Oh, cool. ...of a horse, yep. if they're even out. Right. And if you don't hear that, you hear nothing. And I loved it. That's awesome. A lot of... Lewis did not like it. Lewis thought we were going to be murdered. I'm like, by who, Lou? A horse or the border collie that's hanging out with the horse? Right. Nobody's going to... He didn't like the silence because he's used to living in New York City and he likes the noise. It's like his whoopee. It's his background. I right. loved it. Um, that's awesome. 
It would be difficult to build or live on the island. Great. Nobody needs to build or live there. No. It should just be where you visit. Then you could let like school groups go out there and camp out for the day. That'd be so fun. fun. It'd be so fun to own it and be able to share it. Share it. And then when you're when you weren't don't feel like sharing it, you kick everybody out for a few days and go have your own fun. True. They're havens for wildlife, but nothing bad. And the black backed gulls and rare plants. Um no bad. There's nothing bad there though. It could hurt you. Right. Bring some goats out. I don't know, they might fuck up the <laughs> ecosystem. <laughs> They'll start eating everything. Goats. All the fancy plants and all the ones that are guarded and stuff, and bring then the goats some, will be like bring some hippos. Yeah, yeah. Bring a hippo or two out. That'll be fun. Elon's rocket blew up, and I just want to say this is some other news. The trash yeah. from his explosion. Oh, yeah. It just went all over Texas. Yeah. Now here's my question. It said we didn't make Elon go clean that shit up. He's, they should. Abbott's not going to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Starship spacecraft designed to fly people on a Mars mission some days lifted off the launch pad and then blew up in mid-flight. It's all the, the day he took all our blue check, uh, check marks away on Twitter, so yeah. maybe that's karma yeah. coming around. You blow, blow up rockets. my blue check mark, I blow up your you rocket. Blow up my check mark. <laughs> <laughs> Some people got their blue check marks back and they're dead. Norm McDonald, my friend, he's dead. Wow. Yeah. Do you think he paid eight dollars? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Lewis is his god too. My God. It's like who what kind of game is he playing? It's like I feel like he wants to wreck it. He yeah. wants to destroy it. And then what? You right. still lost forty four billion. Does that not mean anything to him? No. That's so Terrible when you think of what Dolly Parton would have done with $44 billion. Surely something better than wreck Twitter. Yes. Dear God. Mm. There was a large amount of sand and ash-like particu- par- uh, matter and heavier debris kicked up by the launch. And it spread far beyond the expected debris field. Because he, you know, he thinks he's out. It went all the way to South Padre Island. Wow. Yeah, I mean. That's crazy. Right. I don't trust him to not clean it up. I would trust I would trust um, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, he seems responsible, like him or not. Yeah. Um, Port Isabella they reported uh, broken windows in their businesses, shaking windows at their home, dust and matter that coated their homes, schools, and land unexpectedly. Cars were covered in this shit. I don't know. I'm going to do a follow up to see if they make him pay the bill. Papa Birdie has no powers anymore. I know. It'd um, be fun to watch the debate. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're getting to the business section, but first, I would like to have a meeting with the Toronto police. I, I know. I know. Paddles, this is your nation. They are not on the goddamn ball. Not in my city. Police in Canada are investigating after an air cargo container carrying almost $15 million in gold and other valuables, vanished from the <laughs> Toronto Pearson International Airport. Oh, my God. That airport's the worst in the world anyway. <laughs> you don't know who killed Barry and Honey Sherman, and you lost $15 million at the airport. You're all fired. All of you. Oh my God. The RMCP terrible. wouldn't let this go on. This is the Toronto police. Yeah. An aircraft that arrived at the often bustling airport in the early evening had been unloaded with its cargo transported to a holding facility as, quote, per normal procedure. <laughs> what happened to the precious cargo after it was unloaded is a mystery. Oh, they're, they're going to, yeah, well, I'm sure a trickster did it. Fraudster. Yeah, a fraudster. <laughs> it was somehow removed by illegal means. The cargo was reported missing to the police a short time later. It's not clear exactly how much was gold was inside, but... um. The total estimated of the contents is twenty million in Canadian currency. Wow! Uh, it was not exclusive to just gold. There's other shit. That's worth a lot of money. Damn! Inside job. <clears throat> Might have been an inside job. That's how. Remember that movie Casino? Yeah. They did an inside job like that. In 1990, another Canadian airport heist made headlines after armed thieves ambushed a private plane, made off with 13 million in gold ingots and other valuables. It was considered one of Canada's largest robberies at the time. The heist carried out at Dorvel International Airport outside of Montreal reportedly saw at least four men, including one armed with a Soviet-made AK-47 assault rifle, 
Use a stolen truck to tear through a fence before making off with the goods in the stolen van. A pipe bomb had exploded miles away. Under, uh, 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 so this is the biggest one now. <laughs> you know, that would be really funny if they said there was the Leafs were in the playoffs and we weren't paying attention. Sorry. 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 We can get the game on our phone now. Stop it. Don't be mean, man. Don't be mean. Um, all right. We're right up for the next se- next segment called It's None of Your Business. I do too. Because it is your business, America. It's a business we care about on a day-to-day thing. Things that affect our lives. This is going to affect your life. Target rolls out the new perk for loyal shoppers in a bid to boost sales and stave off retail apocalypse that took down Bed Bath & Beyond. They're now allowing a convenient curbside scheme that will allow shoppers to return unwanted items without leaving their cars. What? Yep. Wow. So you returns. The drive-up refund service forms part of the store's strategy to retain customers amid fears of a retail apocalypse. Um, yeah. which has seen chains shut up that uh, shops in their droves due to low sales. It's going to be uh, uh, a fourth of Target stores that will be available at all 2,000 by the end of summer. Wow. Yeah. How about returning it? Who's going to give you that? I don't know. I went in to return ink, yeah. and I thought she's never going to believe me, yeah. but I swear to God the ink was empty. It yeah. came with no ink. Uh-huh. And I had my whole story ready, and the girl was like, yeah, I don't really care. Just go get some more ink. And I was like, oh, okay. Target. (laughs) I used to do a joke about my Aunt Peggy could return anything. I forgot what it was. Like, she could return a half-eaten sandwich and go, well, it was kind of good. She was so good at returning. Um, You got to download the app in order to do it. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Be, it, this comes after Amazon began slapping customers with refund processing fees. The Amazon return thing has gotten out of hand. It's ridiculous. And I have a special on Amazon Prime. I have to keep repeating that, yeah. that I love Amazon. However, <laughs> however, the return thing has got the girls at my UPS store really pissed. very <laughs> pissed because they're basically doing Amazon's job. Right. And then people just walk in with the thing and they don't have any of the stuff. And then the girls got to do it all. Right. What? They get mad that there's lines. They get, oh, they get mad. I know. It's terrible. Well, and the kids that work up there are so good at what they do. And really all I want to see is pictures of Emily's goats. <laughs> One of the girls who works there has goats. She keeps, you get to like a goat every week. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, <sighs> shoppers must inform their nearest store via app when they plan to return the item. Mm-hmm. Too. You have to drive the store, drive to the store, follow the instructions on the app, which will navigate them exactly where they need to be. A staff member will meet them at the allocated slot and pick up the refunded pro- uh, product. I don't know uh, about this. I don't know about saying when I'm coming. The store already offers a drive up uh, pickup service, which allows customers to collect the products they've ordered online without leaving their cars. Which was a COVID thing. It was a COVID right. thing. The retailer says it's been a major driver of online sales. Wonderful for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know about all that. That sounds like too much work. I'd rather just go in. And they should want me to come in because I'll spend more money. Every time I go in Target, say I'm going to get one thing, the bill is $120. Yeah, it's crazy. Here's some. Oh, I had another. It's none of your business. Oh, I moved that because it was about how to get back on Facebook. So um, we're going to close out. First, I'm going to tell you about a possum, and then I'm going to tell you my feel-good story, even though it's sad. Okay. Everybody should know this about possums. Okay. Don't judge. They're not. Okay? They're not a rat. They're okay. America's only, North America's only marsupial. So they, they should be worshipped. All right. They're super <laughs> creepy looking. They should not be confused with the Australian marsupials, um, but they are marsupials. They um, are. Yeah, but, like, when a possum mom has all of her babies, mm-hmm. they just ride on her back. Oh. Yeah. But they burrow in like they, um... Still got those weird tails, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they grow to the size of a house cat. Okay. Um, they are semi-omnivores. Oh. 
Although there's ex- exceptions, this this Wikipedia thing gets really hard. I tried to just do it down to the, um, like all of the, uh, like that of all marsupials, the fur consists of on hair, softest thing I've ever petted. It was as soft as a cat. He was great. Roman was great. Many females have a pouch. The tails and part, uh, tails and parts of feet bear scoots. His hands look like hands. He had fingers. And his feet, the bottom of his feet was like a baby's skin. It was the softest thing I'd ever, but then I, he doesn't go out. I probably spent 10, 15 minutes with Roman. I mean, I had a show to do. I had to get moving, but, um, uh, they will eat meat, but mostly, um, they just like, um, bugs and stuff. They have litters up to 20. This is the greatest part, though. Um, they're usually solitary and nomadic, staying in one area as long as there's food and uh, water available. Uh, they do not dig or put much effort into building their own, uh, own little houses. They're nocturnal. They favor the dark. Where do they, where do they live? Just in the woods. Around? Wherever. Okay. Yep. When threatened or harmed, they will play possum. A lot of people don't understand play possum. That's where that came from. I don't get it. When, it's usually when they're super scared. They go into this state, mimicking the appearance of uh, and smell of a sick or dead animal. This physiological response is involuntary, like fainting, rather than a conscious act. In the case of baby possums, however, the brain does not always react the way at the appropriate moment. Therefore, they often fail to play possum when threatened. When the big ones do it, there's a kid on Instagram that goes out in the woods and teaches you about animals, a young guy. I love this guy. He found one that was playing possum, and he picked it up. It looks totally dead. Takes about... It could take up to four hours for them to wake back up. Yeah. When a play, a, when a possum is playing possum, the animal's lips are drawn back, the teeth are bared, and saliva foams around the mouth. Delicious. Yeah. Its eyes are half closed. Um, the stiff, curled form can be prodded, turned over, and even carried away without reaction. He picks them up when he sees them and shows you, then he teaches you. He'll regain consciousness after a period of a few minutes to four hours. Wow. They eat animals, insects, rodents, and birds. They also feed on eggs, frogs, plants, fruits, blah, blah, blah. Snakes? They eat all kinds of things. And this is the crazy thing. This is the craziest thing about possums. Many large possums are immune to the venom of rattlesnakes and pit vipers Whoa. and regularly prey upon these snakes. So if you've got any rattlesnakes you don't want around, get these guys. It seems to be unique, unique to the possums. <laughs> um... The fur to lance, one of the most venomous snakes in the new world, may have developed its highly potent venom as a means to prey or the defense mechanisms against large possums. So, okay. yeah. Nothing wrong with them. Just don't want to hold them. I, I would totally hold Roman again. He was wonderful. Totally. Would not let Roman live in the house. They can't be. Um, so, I'm going to sign off here, termites. And if you don't like sports, it doesn't even matter if you don't like sports. Because this is not really about sports. but So we had the same announcer in St. Louis. And I'm hiding Fred Bird right now because the Cardinals are in last place and I find it completely unacceptable. Yeah. I can't even watch. No. No. And Nina is fascinated with it. The Tigers are better. The, ti- the Orioles are better, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd start firing people. Oh, but we've had the same announcer in St. Louis Well, we had. Uh, and he just died. His name's Mike Shannon. My dad actually went to grade school with him. And I said, was he a great athlete in grade school? My dad goes, I don't know. All I remember is that the, and they went to Nativity Catholic grade school. He goes, every year at the talent show, his mother would make him take an accordion, and, and he'd have to play Our Lady of Spain, and he never could do it. <laughs> he could, he could. <laughs> but he was such a nice man, yeah. and he was so funny, and he smoked, and he drank, and he said totally inappropriate things. He didn't know they were inappropriate. Mm-hmm. He's my dad's age. And, right. you know, they just said shit. And one time I went in the Cardinals booth, the only time I've ever been in the Cardinals booth in my life, um, I was invited in there, and Mike is there, and I couldn't believe it was Mike. Right. Yeah, and he's like, so, sweetheart, uh, I'm just going to give you the mic, and I'm going to go get myself a Frosty Cold Budweiser. And he what? left for three innings. <gasps> I mean, there was one. Uh, there was another man left, uh-huh. but I'm like, yeah, I didn't. I don't want to announce a Cardinal game. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Where did he go? And I kept right. wait, out sneaking things and shit. I mean, back then you. you can do anything. Um, 
So uh, he just became the voice of summer, and he hasn't been going on road games lately in the last few years, and I missed it. But they we call them Shannonisms in St. Louis, and even if you don't care about sports, this is just some of the shit he said. He was so fun to listen to because he cared about the game, but he also... Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. This is, I heard this game live. We were playing the Mets. Okay. Broadcasting from New York under a full moon, Mike Shannon said this. I wish you folks back in St. Louis could see the moon. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's going to tell Mike? <laughs> this, this is crazy. He said these things out loud on TV. Referring to Japanese pitching sensation, Hideo Nomo. He's the biggest thing to hit Japan since they dropped that bomb on Nagashima. What? There is... Who's going to Nagashima? No. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a stuff that Jack Buck would just go... Jack Buck died quite a while ago, but Jack Buck would go, Okay, we're moving on! <laughs> Mike goes, uh, This is referring to a questionable ruling by an official scorer. Well, no one's perfect. Only one guy was ever perfect, Jack. And they nailed that guy to a tree. Meaning Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting on the day before Easter. I just want to tell everybody happy Easter and happy Hanukkah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's not Hanukkah at all, Mike, but we'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, when... Cubs Derek Lee took second base late in the game without a throw from the Cardinals catcher. Lee runs into second, they'll just let him go. They call that the runner's indifference or something like that. Ha! Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so they were in Montreal. This game is moving along at a pretty quick rate. Must have something to do with the exchange rate. Ha! Referring to a young fan who was hit with a foul ball. That youngster's going to leave this stadium with a souvenir today. Not a ball, but a nice-looking bruise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> I just loved him. Oh, oh my God. Um, <laughs> he goes, okay, after a batter leading off in the ninth when his team was down... By three, he took a mighty swing and missed. He was trying to th hit a three-run homer with the bases empty. To my knowledge, no one in the history of the game ever done that. But it could happen someday. You never know in this world of baseball. <laughs> he does bad like you. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. This is funny, too. When Mike, while well, Mike and Joe were discussing the unflattering photographs of players that had been flashed on the screen at another ballpark, Mike's take on the quality of the photo selection. Some of those guys' pictures looked like they were taken while they saw their first UFO. The oh, first one. The first UFO. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. A hit up the middle right now would be like a nice ham sandwich and a cold, frosty one. <laughs> They drank through the whole game. It was so much fun. We need to bring that back. Let yes. the announcers drink. Yep. Yeah. Maybe not smoke in the booth. That's a little crowded, but you could dip or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> He's madder than a pig caught under a barnyard gate. Oh, oh. Okay. Listen to this one. And he never got in trouble for this. He ran faster to second than a cat in Chinatown. Whoa. <laughs> These were on TV. Whoa. Well, the radio. Uh. Well, folks, this game began as a tiny worm, and it's blossoming into a large cobra. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God, that's what he said. It's raining here like a Chinese fire drill. Okay. Okay. What does that even mean? <laughs> I mean, even though we shouldn't be saying these things. <laughs> Meaning they're going fast. <laughs> yeah. He goes, we owe you a station break. This one's for the folks living in Paris, Tennessee. You thought I was going to say Paris. Kentucky, no, ha, no such luck. <laughs> Boy, a frosty cold bud riser would be great right now. Then you hear a long pause and you just hear, ah. Whoa. <laughs> Who's your favorite Cardinal now? <sighs> I know it's ours. 
My favorite Carl. No, I like Donovan, the new guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see if there's any. <laughs> oh, this is a Japanese baseball player. So Taguchi, who wears a, he, who wears a number 99. Unless you stand him upside down on his head, then it's 66. Uh, <laughs> Joe Buck. Mike, the Cardinals would like to welcome a group of 19 French foreign exchange students in Section 382. Mike, where are they from, Joe? Joe, um, France, I think. <laughs> Just said French foreign exchange students. They're from France, Mike. <sighs> That's about it. There's, there's so many more. There's Shannonisms. You can go online and just do Shannon. Um. Our next homestand follows this road trip. All do, Mike. Uh -huh. yeah. But, you know, he just was everything. It's like Chicago losing Harry Carey. I mean, Jack Buck, we lost him, and then we lost Mike. And Mike, yeah. Um, it's just too bad. Yeah. He was great. But how long do you expect the guy to go on the road? I mean, some of my friends were complaining when he wasn't going on the road last year, maybe the year before that. I don't know when he exactly he stopped. But I'm like, you know what? They're, they're, they have 100 and some odd games. Mm -hmm. You can't expect these old guys that are 83 years old to be packing their bag every guy. You know, it's just crazy. Um, so there you go, termites. That's a little something for That's fun. Sad. Yeah, I miss the old school guys where they were not perfect. They were probably said offensive things. They shouldn't have been said, but they said them. And, and at the time... Whatever. Um, Made it interesting. Yeah. Mike, yeah. And he knew everything about baseball. And he knew every kid. He knew every single thing about them. I mean, he these were Shannonism. These are, like, goofy things he said. But he really did know everything about And he, he was a cardinal. He was great. He was a great third baseman. Um, and then we let him go in the booth. And then he just stayed forever, um, which was great. But he knew everything. Like, he did his research all the way up to 80-something, like, where he'd be like, so we got this new guy, Brendan Donovan, he's from Indianapolis. I heard he loves tacos. Like, he would, but he would go spend time with that kid. And right. then he knew him. And, and, like, the old school, instead of the, I feel like the new guys, they're just reading shit off some computer ESPN site and regurgitating it. I don't like it. It's not as much fun anymore. So anyway, termites, there you go. That's a feel-good story. Good for Mike, putting in a good 50-some-odd years in the Cardinal organization. Organization, as he would say, with the Nar St. Louis accent. It sounds like my dad. It's a wonderful organization. It's for the fans. The heartache everywhere. Uh, where am I going? You can come find me on the road in Ponte Verde. Ponte Verde. Yes, Charleston. Yes. Santa Rosa, California. Wheatland, California. Vegas this summer. That's in June. Atlantic City. July, I think, or Borgata. August. The Borgata. Yeah. The Borgata. Yeah. Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Fun. You have never been. Um, Cape Cod Melody Tent. Waited my whole life to get this gig. Cool. You guys better show up. Yeah. Yep. Boise, Idaho. That's the last place I was before COVID. Time to go back. The night before it was time to fly home and go, what the hell? Well, I was told to fly home. I'm going to be off for a month. Reno. I love Reno. It's so sketchy. Yeah. Sketchy. You could sit in a Reno bar for hours and just watch everything that happened, and you would not be able to write it down fast enough. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Cleveland, Ohio. Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where my cousin Mike's at. Madison, Wisconsin. Chicago, Illinois, and it keeps on going. But that's, yeah, because summer's a little light because I'm going to go have some fun. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to go do some cray-cray fun things, all of us. I've talked to the old people and the children, the little children. And do a little Gatlinburg Smoky Mountain. Fun, yeah. Yeah. Moonshine. So, yeah. Well, they won't be shooting moonshine, but I will. Right. That's how Aunt Cat's going to have her fun. <laughs> a little trip down to the old moonshine thing. Delicious. Mom, here you go. Here's a cookware store. You go in there and find yourself a spatula See that says, hour. I love Smoky Mountains. <laughs> See you in an hour. <laughs> Dad, take the kids to the water park. He loves it. <laughs> All right, uh, that's all I got for you, termites. It's springtime. Yep. It's trying, yep. but not really. Yep. But anyway, um, go Devils. We'll know by the time this airs if it happened or not. Right. If not, I got to get behind Edmonton. Over the Leafs? For Jan, oh. Ar for Jan Arden. She's rooting for the West. 
Maybe my friend Mike Wilmot is a Toronto guy. I don't know. He doesn't ever tweet about that. No. He's from that area. Got a That's right. Yeah. No, I don't. Know. I just want it to be a Canadian team. They need to win the Stanley Cup. I do not want it to be a team that is brand new. I think that's bullshit. Took the Blues 50 years to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't want to see one of these teams, I won't mention names, cracking, that, um, <laughs> you know, were developed. And I love Seattle, and I love their colors. Yep. And I love the name Kraken. But I don't think year one, somebody should put some governors on that crap. Yeah. You can't be, I thought they did that after Vegas won. No, it's, I'm talking too much about this yeah. one. No one's going to care. All right. That's it, termites. Ready? 